Okay, so I'm going to show you quickly how I set up a cassette deck to optimally record by adjusting the tape sensitivity, your record calibration level here, and the bias control using a computer, although you can use an oscilloscope or a, uh, what do you want to call it, and a um, tone generator. Uh, ideally, you want to start off by cleaning the tape head and the tape path and all the little metal bits um, using IPA, isopropylene alcohol. Um, just using a cotton bud and then demagnetizing the head. Either one of the, one of these um, tape things, or you can buy a separate handheld device that you do all the metal bits on. It's probably better doing that way, more professional. But whatever. Uh, this is just a really cheapy deck. My decent one's broken, and to be honest, I don't really use tape that much anymore. Recommended again, three head deck. Yeah, I don't know how to do it with a two head deck unless you got you know calibration tapes and shit. So, right, okay, let's get into it. I use a piece of software, German software called uh, Audio Tester, version 3. He does a it's, it's shareware version, this one. Uh, there's a pay for one with no time limits. Uh, if you're a professional user, I recommend you buy it. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, the other thing is the audio interface. Um, use the highest sample rate you can at like 192k because when you get to adjusting your bias tone you, you get better resolution looking at the waveform because we're going to be using a 10k sign on that um, so yeah uh, the other thing is obviously adjust your levels so like before you start I, I plug the output into the inputs adjust that 1k sign tone let's say at maximum output level and then adjust your inputs so they're just below clipping uh, this is a really shit audio interface and I can't do that because the audio inputs there are too twitchy but it's not really that important to be honest what I'm doing so first things first is I got this set up for a uh, 1k output at full output so if I turn this generator on, tone generator you can see here I've adjusted the record level this is the source by the way, no, the tape's not recording uh, it's 0 dB um, and that's what you want to do and then next you want to adjust that to the level that actually we're actually going to be using uh, on a cassette deck it's not like a reel to reel deck and uh, we need to use it minus 20 dB because the tape will like, saturate um, all the specifications you have on tape decks that you see like your frequency response for example are done at minus 20 dBs um, so uh, that's something I didn't know when I was younger and I'd be using these really hot tones and thinking they're broken but I mean, even if you look when you buy it tapes for example this cheapy Philips one you can see the specs going at minus 20 dB and 0 dB psh, massive roll off there in the highs uh, we're using a TDK SA90 chrome tape um, and first thing we were going to set is the level your tape sensitivity level and I've already done this but I'll show you anyway and we use a uh, 400 Hertz I'm using this on screen keyboard because my keyboard's run out of batteries and I don't have any triple A's. So 400 hertz at minus 20 dB sine wave. Okie dokie. Tone generator on, oscilloscope on. Uh, set the time base. Right, so that is two channels down that you can't see. They're overlapping, I've done that so I can see any differences in left and right channels easier. So right's red and blue's left. Um, so that's the source essentially coming out of the tape deck. So we're going to press record and switch the tape monitor button to monitor what's coming off tape. And then we'll adjust the level knob here until it matches the source. So that's simple. And that adjusts your tape sensitivity. So we let's get on here. So that's the source and that's what's coming off tape. If you look really carefully you can see it's not perfect sign, that's just the noise, that's your tape hiss. But if you can see, that's, so that's the tape and that's the source, that's the tape, that's the source, the levels are pretty pretty well matched. Um, if I was to stick in another tape now, that's a total, totally different um, formulation, although it's still a chrome tape. This is a BASF chrome tape, type 2. That's a Type 2 chrome tape as well, but it's a TDK. So we'll see, I'll show you. So 
here we are, um, source. So that's your source coming from the tone generator, if you will, the computer. And this is what's coming off tape now. You can see there's a drop off. So every tape type is different. Your TDK is different from your BASF and your Sony tapes, for example. So what we would do then is adjust this level knob until it matches that source. So let me stick my SA90 back in there because that's the that's the tape. That's the, most of the tapes I got are these SA90s, and I got Ferrex for the car, cheapies. Um, fucking, hell, I sound like a right hipster, don't I? Um, so yeah, back on that, back to that. Let's just switch the source for the moment. Um, so once we've done setting the levels, we want to set the high frequency response on it, and that's using uh, 100, so 100, uh, 10k. <laughs> um, test tone. So we got a 10k sine wave, that is the source right there, and I'm going to switch it to tape, and you can see it's wobbling a little bit, it's a cheap deck, and we got some left and right discrepancies, again that's just your tape azimuth probably, but it's nothing too out of the ordinary with decks like this, and it's an old deck, but if we switch to the source again, and now back to tape, it's actually we got it pretty spot on adjusting that bias. So now we can see there's your level where it's set, there's your bias, and the reason why your balance is like so far that way is uh, not because of discrepancies with that, is the uh, the pots in both of these are going a little bit old and crappy. So that's it. Um, you can over bias, so you can make that a little bit stronger. Um, that's normal as well, that just gives you extra slight extension at your extremes. The other cool thing that this software can do, if we stop that, um, we can produce a frequency response chart. We can set it up and have as many step counts as we want, and in the end, I'm not going to do it now because it takes a little while, um, obviously you have to have your deck um, in monitoring off the tape, uh, but if we have a look, I've already done one earlier. Here it is. That's the frequency response for the SA90 on this Denon, cheapy Denon cassette deck. So there's your 20 hertz there, and you've got 20k there and beyond. It's 30k, whatever. So you can see it starts rolling off there. It's not too bad. Look at it. It's pretty flat. It's slight such, but it's pretty good. So that's that's how I set it up. So I've probably forgotten to tell you quite a lot of things anyway, but two notable ones that I forgot to mention is before you start doing anything make sure the uh, any Dolby noise reduction or DVX is turned off and make sure the MPX filter is turned off um, if you don't know what the MPX filter is so the MPX filter on a cassette deck is a notch filter and uh, a notch filter is basically a kind of filter that removes a specific frequency in the audio range and leaves out the rest uh, on a cassette deck this is set to 19 kilohertz and the reason why we have this isn't because of this device here but rather because of this device over here the tuner so on FM radio at 19 kilohertz uh, they broadcast a what's known as a pilot tone basically a sine tone and this tells the tuner that the station is broadcasting in stereo um, and the reason why we need this attenuated when we record the cassette tape is because if the radio itself doesn't have a good MPX filter, and some of them actually don't, um, it interferes with, with the bias oscillator, so basically it would interfere with your recording and the, your recording quality. So the MPX filter attenuates this frequency or just get rid, gets rid of it depending on how effective the filter is. Um, so even some of the best tuners don't entirely attenuate this frequency. Um, there you go. And the other mentionable thing I forgot to mention, the reason why I've got this Technics here, which is actually in bits, uh, I would like to turn it on and show you, but um, I don't know where I put the transformer, somewhere. Um, it's in the process of being repaired. Anyway, um, this deck, uh, like a lot of other Technics series decks actually, to be honest with you, when I said you calibrate it show on the meters at 0 dB that was the Denon on these Technics decks 0 dB um, is actually at 
plus 3db and it's indicated by two little Dolby symbols these right above 3db you have these and that's it and then you'd adjust it there and then do your rest the other cool thing actually about this deck is your um, record level calibration you've got individual pots for left and right and the other point is a bit of information I guess is if your deck stops recording there's a high chance of it being the um, BIOS oscillator and they use these uh, cheapy ceram ceramic caps um, and a lot of the times these tend to go especially now that these uh, decks are getting old so you need to replace these and it should be fixed um, the only thing is finding quality ones because they work at very high frequencies and usually driving this inductor or something so yeah that's it